Hello and welcome back to Conspiracy Cats. Now, if you're new to the YouTube flat earth scene, there is a group of, how can I put it, um, special minds that you're gonna get to know very, very soon. Now, they call themselves the Flat Earth Debate Team. I have heard them called other things though. Flicks, plebs, plamps, whatever. All right, man, no need. Anyway, the Flat Earth Debate Team, they are led by this guy. Hi, I'm Nathan Oakley. Now, this is Nathan Oakley, and actually, he started off on YouTube as quite a nice guy, but then one day, he had a haircut, and it turned him into a monster. Thanks for the advert. I really appreciate it when my bitches do work for me. And you know, the worst thing is, I don't think he even wanted a haircut. I think somebody came in in the middle of the night and just chopped it off while he was sleeping. Because you didn't know anything about it, did you? As far as I was aware, the fringe had just gone. Yeah, it must have been really upsetting. Anyway, in today's episode, we are going to meet every single member of the Flat Earth Debate Team. We're going to learn a little bit about them. We're going to teach them some science, and then, just for the hell of it, they're going to star in their own production of the A-Team and sing as a song. So, should we get started, big fella? Oh, yes, please. Then roll the intro. Welcome to the F-Team. Not so long ago, in a place pretty close to home, for, how can I put this kindly, unique minds decided to pretend to believe that the Earth was flat. So let's start with Nathan Oakley. Now, Nathan Oakley genuinely runs a daily Flat Earth debate show where he constantly asks people for money so he can prove that the Earth is flat. The problem is, he's got the scientific understanding of somebody who's about... Oof, how, how old? Thirteen and a half. No, Nathan. Tell the truth, man. Three. Yeah, three is just about right, as evidenced by this. Excuse my ignorance. Is the, is the moon between us, us and the sun? So I promise you I'm not making this up. This man genuinely asks his subscribers every day for money so he can disprove the heliocentric model. And he doesn't even know where the moon is in relation to the sun. Explain to me. I'm ignorant. Literally, I don't know. And it doesn't stop there. Not only can Nathan Oakley not understand basic scientific concepts, but also mathematical concepts as well, as demonstrated by the legendary clip where he didn't understand the difference between metres and kilometres. Let me demonstrate. Giganto, pal, how tall are you? 10,000 metres. Wow. Um, how do you turn 10,000 metres into kilometres? Easy. Just divide 10,000 by 1,000. Yeah, 10,000 metres divided by 1,000 gives us 10 kilometres. It's not difficult, is it? Yes. But when this exact same mathematical problem was presented to Nathan Oakley, he was determined that he knew better. You do not divide Red. metres okay. to come out with kilometres. Now, if I was to pay Nathan Oakley a compliment, it would be that he has such amazing self-confidence that it totally overshadows any shame that a mere mortal would feel in being wrong as consistently as he is. Why would you divide a value that is given in metres to come up with something larger, i.e. kilo? And the more wrong he gets, the more confident he sounds. Yeah, I'll ask you a third time. Why would you divide a meter value when trying to come up with a larger value? Dividing something makes it smaller. Anyway, this isn't about Nathan Oakley. This is about the team as a whole. So let's take a look at member number two. My personal favourite and everybody's favourite globe hero. Regular views of the show know exactly who I'm talking about. These are the adventures of Granty, the Flat Earther, as he explores the strange world known to Fraggles as the Globe. So while it appears that Nathan Oakley's problem is understanding basic uh, children's maths and science, it appears that Ranty Flat Earth's problem is he can't stop filming things sailing over the horizon, proving curvature, while he's actually trying to prove Flat Earth. It really makes me chuckle. Yeah, it is very funny. Let's take a look. Using my own observation of the Stena Hibernia as it made its way from Haitian to the Isle of Man, I will show you how to critically analyse what we are seeing, as opposed to simply believing that you are seeing it go over Earth curve. Now, I really upset Ranty Flat Earth when he made that video because I made the outstanding claim that he'd actually filmed the boat going over the horizon. Whereas Ranty's take on it is that the boat was disappearing from the bottom up due to a magic physics called compression that nobody understands, not even him, and that that compression has something to do with something called the diffraction limit. Now, last week I was on a, a live hangout with a guy called Jose JG Gonzalez. I've linked that in the description. It's a really good hangout. But Ranty Flat Earth was in the stream and he couldn't wait to get his teeth into me. Hello, my name's Ranty Flat Earth, and I'm just here to tell you that Conspiracy Cats is a lying, twisting, misrepresent uh, of the truth. Ranty, you were a little bit triggered when you wrote that, weren't you? 
Listen, mate, it's all right, I forgive you. Now, was it because I told you you didn't understand what diffraction was? <laughs> Baldy, you're a dickhead, man. All right, Fred. Who are you? My name is Dread. Anyway, Ranty wasn't for leaving me alone, so he decided to pester me on the stream to see if I could actually explain what I thought diffraction was. Go on, conspiracy cats. If you think you're so clever, why don't you explain what the diffraction limit is so I can tell you you're wrong? So this is what I said. Essentially, diffraction limit, um, when, when, when light passes through an aperture, we get a diffraction pattern. You know, the central disk of that we're going to call the area's disk. And we have these, these areas of uh, constructive and destructive interference around it. We get these. Uh, and, and, and light coming from any part of an object, any part of an object, not just the bottom, not just the top, but literally every single part of an object as it passes through the aperture is going to, is going to create one of those diffraction patterns. Now, if the diffraction patterns get so close that the first minima of one uh, lies underneath the <coughs> first minimum of one, uh, underneath the maximum of the, the, the next one, then you can't resolve them. You can't tell them apart. You can't tell that those two objects are two objects anymore. They will appear as one object. Now, that is about the best explanation I can give in about 20 seconds. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is, as an object moves further away, any kind of uh, loss of resolution is going to happen across the whole object. There is literally nothing in uh, diffraction, the diffraction limit, or the Rayleigh criterion that says things should vanish from the bottom up. It's literally just not there. I wonder what Ranty had to say about my explanation. Wrong. Hmm. But it wasn't wrong, was it? No. But you kept on insisting I was wrong, didn't you? Oh boy, space comma. Yeah, I actually did it. I actually put a space comma in. Conspiracy cats just showed how retarded he is. But I wasn't wrong, was I, Ranty? In fact, Ranty was so confident I got my explanation totally wrong that he promised to make a video to correct me. Oh dear, conspiracy cats just lied. Thanex for the interview, Jose. He'll make a video later. So I waited very excitedly for this video, and when it finally arrived, it seems as though Ranty had actually done a little bit of reading off camera. And instead of correcting me, he agreed with me. You can't tell them apart. You can't tell that those two objects are two objects anymore. They will appear as one object. So it appears that he does indeed understand that two objects will appear as one object when the diffraction limit is reached and breached. That didn't work out well for you, did it, Ranty? Now, Bob the Science Guy has actually done a response video to Ranty's video, and I've linked that in the description. Um, some of the science he puts in there is absolutely fantastic, and it really blows the diffraction argument right out of the water. It's well worth a watch. But to celebrate Ranty having learned something about diffraction, Ranty Flat Earth has actually put together a punk rock song. And in that punk rock song, he laughs about the time where he thought things disappearing from the bottom up were due to diffraction and his magical um, science called compression. He's going to debut that song for us now. Ranty, take it away. I know what it looks like, like a boat sailing over the horizon. But that's just your eyes playing tricks with your mind. The truth is the earth is flat and what you're seeing is diffraction. Or maybe I'm a lying prat and I'm looking for a reaction. Compression, 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 compression. Let's call it compression, baby. Compression, 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 compression. Give me a number, I'll call you maybe. And I'll tell you about the flat earth, tell you about the flat earth, tell you about the flat earth. Wow, Ranty. That was, um... It was absolutely beautiful. Sure, why not? Um, anyway, let's move on to the other two members of the group, starting with Arwin. Now, Arwin is a man of incredible scientific insight. As you go, if you look further away, things you see further away, yeah, they become obstructed from the bottom up. I know, right? And with content of that higher quality, I'm amazed that he's not got more subscribers. And I still don't have a freaking thousand subscribers. What the hell's going on? I'm the only one here. The only damn one. Well, you guys know me by now, and you know that if I can help anybody out, I will. So if you check the description in this video, what you'll see is that I've forgotten to put a link to Arwin's channel. 
Anyway, um, who's next? Ah, Quantum Eraser. Now, he is a funny guy. Check out this joke he told about me just the other week. Wait till you hear this one. This, this physics teacher hit Phil sixth grade intro to physics. <laughs> it's brilliant. I've got to tell Daniel. <sighs> hey, Daniel, mate. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Um, listen, I've got one for you. Um, this physics teacher, <laughs> I can hardly get it out, it's so funny. This physics teacher, he would fail sixth grade physics. Daniel. I said this physics teacher would fail sixth grade physics. Oh. Must be the way I tell him. Anyway, back to Quantum Eraser, the final member of our Brains Trust team. Now, Quantum Eraser has a very foul mouth. For fuck's sake, man! And he can't stop saying the C word. Only not the C word that you're probably thinking of. You see, Quantum Eraser is so obsessed with the idea that the Earth must have a dome above it to keep our atmosphere in that he can't stop making presentations in which he shoehorns the word container in as many times as he possibly can, like this. A gas is a sample of matter that conforms to the shape of a container in which it is held and acquires a uniform density inside the container, even in the presence of gravity and regardless of the amount of substance in the container, if not confined to a container. And that's why I wrote him this song and he was not happy about it. Quantum Eraser. His favorite word is container. Quantum eraser. His favorite word is container. Right, now you've met all four members of the Flat Earth Debate Team, it's time to see if they can work as a crack unit to pull off their own production of the A-Team. I hope so. Here's the intro. If you've got a science problem and you're not really bothered if you get the wrong answer, then maybe you should call the Flat Earth Debate Team. As Hannibal Smith, it's the Flat Earth debate host, Nathan Oki Koki Jokley, as the first man, who else could it be? Only our globe hero himself, Ranty Flat Earth. Only one person could ever fill the boots of Howling Mad Murdoch. Have you guessed? Oh yes, it's our old friend and host of Flat Earth Early Bird, Arwin. The Abaracus can only be the Quantum Eraser. For fuck's sake, man! Now we join our heroes just about as they are waiting for a gang of Hell's Angels to ride into town so they can scare them off. Hey Hannibal, here comes the meat. They're hanging a right on me. For fuck's sake, man! Lay down and we take this town apart! Just stick your tail between your bitch legs and fuck off. Well, you sound like you wanna die, pig! What the hell is your problem? You're gonna eat it, Chef! And I'm gonna feed you to the brothers for dessert! What the hell's going on? I'm the only one here! The only damn one! These guys are crazy! Quick! Let's go! Retreat! I really appreciate it when my bitches do work for me. Okay, so today's been a little bit different, just me being a bit silly, I think. But I'll be back with a more normal Conspiracy Cats video just in a day or two. Keep your eye on the Baldy Cats channel. I'm really trying to improve the quality of the videos that come out on the Baldy Cats channel. Uh, and they're a lot more like the old style Conspiracy Cats video as well. So if you prefer the old style, maybe uh, subscribe to the Baldy Cats channel and you'll see a lot more like that on, the, on a, a much more regular basis. Hopefully starting tonight. Um, as always, I'll put a secret link in the description. And um, do, 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 do. yeah. I'll see you soon. Cats, cats, conspiracy cats. No one quite like him to flatten the flats. So come feel the vibe, like and subscribe, and take off your hats to 